This video is going to be about Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law says that the net force on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration that the force creates. The acceleration always points in the same direction as the net force. So that means that I can rewrite this law, sigma f equals ma, the net force equals mass times acceleration, as sigma fx is equal to max for the x-axis and sigma fy equals may for the y direction. So when I construct my force table, I can put max and may into the net force spot to tell me what's going on with the object. Notice that Newton's second law fits what we know from Newton's first law. If the net force is zero, acceleration must be zero, because if the left side of the equation is zero and the mass is some positive number, the acceleration must be zero to cancel that out. And if net force is not zero, acceleration also has to not be zero and vice versa. So Newton's second law kind of confirms Newton's first law. So for most of the problems that we deal with involving Newton's second law, one axis will have balanced forces, so the net force will be equal to zero newtons, and the other will have unbalanced forces, so the net force will not be equal to zero, it will be equal to m times a in that direction. So a typical force table could look something like this. We could have m times ax and zero on the y direction. So most of the objects that we deal with will have a net force in one direction and zero net force in the other, because they'll be accelerating along one axis but not along the other axis at the same time. But we can also deal with situations where there are both. Here are three examples of using Newton's second law. It seems simple, but it can get a little complicated. A person is pushing a 20 kilogram box with 200 newtons of force. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the ground is 0.5, what is the acceleration of the box? Okay, so to figure out the acceleration, we have to figure out the net force acting on the box. So I'm going to construct a free body diagram. I know that there's a force of gravity pointing down, a normal force pointing up, a force applied from the person, and a force of kinetic friction on the box, because this box is moving. So according to Newton's second law, if this object is accelerating in the x direction, then the sum of all the forces in the x direction must be equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. And there's no acceleration in the y direction, it's not moving up or down at all, so on the y part of the force table, I would fill out zero newtons. So looking at what's happening in the y direction, I can see I have a normal force up and a force of gravity down, so if I put those into my y components of the table, I can see that those two forces will balance each other out to make zero. And in the x direction, I have a force applied forward and a kinetic friction backwards, so that's how I would write them in my force table. So using my force table, I can now write two equations for the net force in the x and y direction. So I know that this equation must be true and this equation must be true as well, and I can now plug in numbers and see if I can solve for that acceleration. So in the y direction, I can see that the normal force has to be equal to the force of gravity. So when I multiply out the force of gravity, I get 20 times 9.8. So the normal force must be 196 newtons. And I also know that the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So I multiply that out, and I find that the force of kinetic friction in the x direction is 98 newtons. So I plug that into my equation on the left for the x-axis, and I know that this person is applying 200 newtons, and the force of kinetic friction is 98. So 200 minus 98 must equal the net force, and that's also equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. So I get 102 newtons is equal to the mass times the acceleration, and when I plug in the mass, I find that the acceleration of this box is 5.5 one meters per second squared. So that's how you would use Newton's second law to solve a problem for acceleration. And I can see here that because acceleration is positive, it points in the direction that we are calling positive. So I called the person's applied force positive and the friction negative, so the acceleration is pointing in the same direction as the person's push. Here's another example. How much force do you need to pull up on a 10 kilogram grocery bag to make it accelerate up at two meters per second squared? There's a very common mistake that happens with lifting problems like this, where students will just take the acceleration, multiply it by the mass, and say that it's the force, because F equals MA. But Newton's second law only works when we're dealing with the net force, not the individual forces on the object. So let's look at the net force. We still have a force of gravity down on this bag and an applied force pulling it up. So when I put this into my table, I know that it's not accelerating in the x direction at all, so the net force there must be zero, but it is accelerating in the y direction, so that's going to be equal to M times AY. And I'm going to call up positive here, so I'm going to say that the force applied is positive and the gravity is negative. So this is the equation that I get out of that. Fa minus Fg is equal to m times a in the y direction. And when I plug this in for my force of gravity, I know that the mass is 10, so 10 times 9.8 is the force of gravity. And I know that my mass is 10 and my acceleration is going to be positive 2 because I'm considering up to be positive. So I plug that into m times a, and this is what I get. Fa minus 98 newtons equals 20 newtons. So that means that Fa, the applied force, must be equal to 118 newtons. So if you want to make a 10 kilogram bag accelerate up at 2 meters per second squared, you need to apply a force of exactly 118 newtons on it to do that according to Newton's second law. 
Here's one more example. We're going to be working with this concept a little bit later in class. But you may have noticed that Newton's second law ties most of the material that we've been talking about in class together. It connects the unit 4 materials on forces with the unit 3 materials on acceleration. So here's an example of using both of those ideas at the same time. So what force do a thousand kilogram car's brakes need to create to slow the car from 30 meters per second to a stop in 50 meters? Assume no air resistance. So let's try to figure this out. We know that if the car is slowing to a stop, the acceleration is going to be pointing in the opposite direction of the velocity because it's taking away from the velocity. So turning this into a free body diagram, these are the forces that I have on the car. There's a normal force going up, a force of gravity down, and a force of kinetic friction going to the left from the brakes. So I'm going to plug these into my force table, and I know that the car is not accelerating in the up-down direction, but it is negatively accelerating in the x direction. So I'm going to say negative f kf is equal to max. So my issue right now is that I have no way of getting to the force of kinetic friction from this problem without knowing the acceleration. But I'm actually given enough values to solve for the acceleration because I have three of the kinematic variables. I specifically have the starting velocity of 30 meters per second. Because it's coming to a stop, that means that the final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. And it's taking 50 meters to do that, so the displacement is 50. So I can use three of the four kinematics variables to solve for the fourth. So I'm gonna solve for acceleration and looking at my kinematics table, I can see that I'm going to use the third equation because that's the only one that has all four of my values. So I'm just going to start plugging these in. And I find that the acceleration should be negative 9 meters per second squared. Notice that I kept the directions consistent with the directions that I defined on my free body diagram. So I'm considering left to be negative here because the force of kinetic friction is negative. So that means that because it's moving to the right, the starting velocity has to be positive And its displacement also has to be positive because it's still being displaced to the right. So that's going to be really important when you solve these problems. You have to keep left and right consistent. If one thing is positive, the other thing has to be negative. So this is going to be a negative acceleration. Okay, now I can just take this and plug this in and figure out what the force of kinetic friction is on its own. So I have the acceleration, I have the mass, and I know that those two together are going to equal the force of kinetic friction because that's the only thing happening in the x direction. So I find that the force of kinetic friction, the magnitude of that force is equal to 9,000 newtons, and it's going to be pointing to the left. The negative canceled out there, that was a little strange. If I put the negative sign next to the symbols itself, then the symbols themselves just stand for the magnitudes of the force, so I know that this force has a magnitude of 9,000 newtons pointing left. So that is how you use Newton's second law. They're going to be more complicated problems in class, but those complications don't come from Newton's second law. They come from incorporating previous knowledge with Newton's second law. So ramp problems, calculating friction, Newton's first and third law, stuff like that. All of these are going to come up and affect Newton's second law problems in some way, and as long as you can incorporate the information from that, you'll be good.